Hi guys. It is a pleasantly, pleasantly, lightly raining day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have wandered into, what is it? it I know it's, uh, well, I don't even know if it is Thursday. Yeah, it is Thursday, June the 3rd, 2021. Uh, here it Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York, and uh, I have to get back to building my pole bean frame, which has turned into a, <laughs> a major project, building a pole bean frame. But I'm going to take a break from, from organic farming to do what I do every day, and that's check into the Doomosphere. And, <clears throat> no, I... I think I've been a little bit, uh, I'm getting a little bit old and in the way around here at Collapse Chronicles. I know this young upstart, Ben Roberts, has kind of pushed me out of the spotlight taking over the interviews. So uh, I claim this week's interview. So for the first time in, what, over a year, I'm going to be interviewing uh, a fellow collapsitarian to Mar, and this man's name is Gerardo Ceballos. Gerardo Ceballos. When uh, when I was last time I spoke to Paul Ehrlich, I asked Paul who I should interview to get a honest fix on what's going on on this planet. And he immediately told me Gerardo Ceballos. So anyone familiar with the term biological annihilation, probably knows <coughs> Gerardo. So I am preparing for my interview uh, with Gerardo tomorrow. Uh, he obviously is a biologist from Mexico. And this is probably uh, that what he is most famous for is this study from three years ago, which received a lot of attention. Uh, and this was, Gerardo was the main author, also Paul Ehrlich, and I'm not sure who Rodolfo Dirzo is uh, as co-authors, but this is from this famous story from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences titled Biological Annihilation via the Ongoing Sixth Mass Extinction Signaled by Vertebrate Population Losses and Declines. So this is a little bit, um, this is a little bit, uh, a little bit dry, uh, a little bit technical, but I think uh, it, I can trust the audience at Collapse Chronicles to uh, understand uh, what they're talking about here, Main, namely that uh, we're toast is what they're talking about. So uh, I'm just going to read pretty much, this is a long involved study. I'm gonna put the link on here it would take me about two hours to go through this. Uh, anybody wanting to understand biological annihilation and the sixth mass extinction, this is required reading. We're just going to read the, the, you know, the preface, the abstract, and the conclusions, and you can uh, read for yourself all of the middle part and look at all of their charts and graphs and all of that. So take it away, Gerardo Ceballos, <clears throat> and educate us about biological extinction. And if this is obviously what I'm going to be talking about, Gerardo, this was written back in 2017, but I assure you everything in this article is more germane <clears throat> today than it was just four years ago. <clears throat> Take it away, Gerardo. <clears throat> the strong focus on species extinctions, a critical aspect of the contemporary pulse of biological extinction, leads to a common misimpression 
that Earth's biota is not immediately threatened, just slowly entering an episode of major biodiversity loss. This view overlooks the current trends of population declines and extinctions. Using a sample of 27,600 terrestrial vertebrate species and a more detailed analysis of 177 mammal species, we show the extremely high degree of population decay in vertebrates, even in common species of low concern. Dwindling population sizes and range shrinkages amount to a massive anthropogenic, meaning human-caused, erosion of biodiversity and of the ecosystem services essential to civilization. This biological annihilation underlies the seriousness for humanity of Earth's ongoing sixth mass extinction event. Okay, so here is, we're going to go into the abstract of the study and jump ahead to the conclusions. <clears throat> okay. The population extinction pulse we describe here shows from a quantitative viewpoint that Earth's sixth mass extinction is more severe than perceived when looking exclusively at species extinctions. And we're going to get talk a lot about this tomorrow and get some real clarification on, uh, just let me put this into English. I think what he's talking about, I will get some clarification on this. When you talk about, when you hear the term species extinction, that means an entire species is obliterated off the space of the planet. But this study looks also at uh, the, the population um, the, the population declines within a species is what they're We're talking the individual animals within a species. Are you following the difference here? <clears throat> so they're looking at the population collapses within species that have not quite gone extinct yet. I think if I'm understanding this correctly, <clears throat> okay. The population extincts pulse we describe here shows that Earth's six mass extinction is more severe than perceived when looking exclusively at species extinctions. Therefore, humanity needs to address anthropogenic population extirpation and decimation immediately. That conclusion is based on analyses of the number and degree of range contraction indicative of population shrinkage and or population extinctions using a sample of 27,600 vertebrate species and on a more detailed analysis documenting the population extinctions between the years 1900 and 2015 and 177 mammal species. We find that the rate of population loss in terrestrial vertebrates is extremely high, even in those species of low concern, which are going to quickly become species of high concern at this rate. <clears throat> In our sample, comprising nearly half of the known vertebrate species, 32% of them are decreasing. That is, they have decreased in both population size and range. In the 177 mammals for which we have detailed data, all, all, that's otherwise known as 100 percent of them 
have lost 30% or more of their geographic ranges and more than 40% of the species have experienced severe population declines greater than 80% of the range shrinkage. Our data indicate that beyond global species extinctions, Earth is experiencing a huge episode of population declines and extirpations, <clears throat> which will have negative cascading consequences on ecosystem functioning and services vital to sustaining our civilization. We describe this as a biological annihilation to highlight the current magnitude of Earth's ongoing sixth major extinction event. The loss of biological diversity is one of the most severe human-caused global environmental problems. I would say it is the single most severe. Hundreds of species and myriad populations are being driven to extinction every year. From the perspective of geological time, Earth's richest biota ever is already well into its sixth mass extinction episode, and of course this was four years ago. Mass extinction episodes detected in the fossil record <clears throat> have been measured in terms of rates of global extinctions or of species of higher taxa. For example, conservatively, almost 200 species of vertebrates have gone extinct in the last 100 years. These represent the loss of about two species per year. Few realize, however, that if subjected to the estimated background or normal extinction rate prevailing in the last two million years, these 200 vertebrate species losses would have taken not one century, but up to 10,000 years to disappear. Considering the marine realm specifically, only 15 animal species have been recorded as globally extinct, likely an underestimate, yes, I do think so, Gerardo, likely an underestimate given the difficulty of accurately recording marine extinctions regarding global extinction of invertebrates, you know, those guys without a backbone, is what, you know, obviously, a vertebrate is a higher form of animal with a backbone. <clears throat> so, regarding the global extinction of invertebrates, including the insect apocalypse, available information is limited and largely focused on threat level. For example, it is estimated that 42% of 3,623 terrestrial invertebrate species and 25% of 1,306 species of marine invertebrates, invertebrates assessed on, on the International Union of Conservation of Nature Red List are classified now as threatened with extinction. And of course that number has risen in the uh, last four years. However, from the perspective of a human lifetime, it is difficult to appreciate the current magnitude of species extinctions. A rate of two vertebrate species extinctions per year does not generate enough public concern especially because many of those species were obscure and had limited ranges, such as the Katarina pupfish, a tiny fish from Mexico, or the Christmas Island pipistrelle, a bat that vanished 
from its namesake volcanic remnant in 2009. <clears throat> Species extinctions are obviously very important in the long run because such losses are irreversible and may have profound effects ranging from the depletion of Earth's inspirational and aesthetic resources to deterioration of ecosystem function and services. The strong focus among scientists on species extinctions, however, <clears throat> conveys a common impression, misimpression, that Earth's biota is not dramatically threatened or is just slowly entering an episode of major biodiversity loss that need not generate deep concern now. Thus, there might be sufficient time to address the decay of biodiversity later or to develop technologies for de-extinction. Yes, technologies for de-extinction. The possibility of the latter being an especially dangerous misimpression. Specifically, this approach has led to the neglect of two critical aspects of the present extinction episode. Number one, the disappearance of populations which essentially always precedes species extinctions. And number two, the rapid decrease in numbers of individuals within some of the remaining populations. Can you say elephants, rhinos, pangolins, vaquita porpoises, on and on. <clears throat> A detailed analysis of the loss of individuals and populations makes the problem much clearer and more worrisome and highlights a whole set of parameters that are increasingly critical in considering the Anthropocene's biological extinction crisis. In the last few decades, habitat loss, overexploitation, invasive organisms, pollution, toxification, and more recently climate disruption, as well as the interaction among all these factors, have led to the catastrophic declines in both the numbers and sizes of populations of both common and rare vertebrate species. For example, several species of mammals that were relatively safe just one or two decades ago are now endangered. In 2016, there were only 7,000 cheetahs in existence and less than 5,000 Borneo and Sumatran orangutans. Populations of African lions dropped 43% since 1993. Pangolin populations have been decimated and populations of giraffes dropped from about 115,000 uh, individuals uh, approximately in 1985 to around 97,000 remaining giraffes representing what is now recognized to be four species. Um, okay, then it starts getting pretty technical and we look at the results, the patterns of variation in population loss among vertebrates. They have some really uh, interesting maps and uh, all, all sorts of maps and charts and graphs to really uh, get you depressed if you really want, if you want to see this graphically represented, what this looks like. This, this is pretty sobering stuff here. 
uh, where they really break all of this study down. Here's the proportion of vertebrate species decreasing with all of those charts. Uh, and then they look at local population extinctions in mammals and give you some more depressing maps. Uh, uh, and then they go into the discussion this long discussion. All right, this is wrapping up the long discussion. In sum, in SUM, uh, in sum, by losing populations and species of vertebrates, we are losing intricate ecological networks involving animals, plants, and microorganisms. We are also losing pools of genetic information that may prove vital to species evolutionary adjustment and survival in a rapidly changing global environment. This suggests that even if there was not ample sign that this crisis extends far beyond that group of animals, today's planetary defaulation, the defaulation, another way of saying biological annihilation, today's planetary defaulation of vertebrates will itself promote cascading catastrophic effects on ecosystems worsening the annihilation of nature. Thus, while the biosphere is undergoing mass species extinction, it is also being ravaged by a much more serious and rapid wave of population declines and extinctions. In combination, these assaults are causing a vast reduction of the fauna and flora of our planet. The resulting biological annihilation obviously will also have serious ecological, economic, and social consequences. Humanity will eventually pay a very high price for the, dom for the decimation of the only assemblage of life that we know of in the universe. Okay, so that was the summary of the discussion. So what is the conclusions of their study? <clears throat> Take it away, Gerardo. What are your bottom line conclusions which, of course, is what we're going to be talking about uh, in our interview tomorrow. It'll be broadcast a week from Sunday. <clears throat> Population extinctions today are orders of magnitude more frequent than species extinctions. Population extinctions, however, are a prelude to a species extinctions, so Earth's six mass extinction episode has proceeded further than most assume. The massive loss of populations is already damaging the services ecosystems provide to civilization. When considering this frightening assault on the foundations of human civilization, one must never forget that Earth's capacity to support life, including human life, has been shaped by life itself. When public mention is made of the extinction crisis, it usually focuses on a few animal species, hundreds out of millions known to have gone extinct, and projecting many more extinctions in the future. But a glance at our maps, which are all detailed here on this link, I'll try to get out to you. 
Um, but a glance at our maps presents a much more realistic picture. They suggest that as much as 50% of the number of animal individuals that once shared Earth with us are already gone, as are billions of populations. Furthermore, our analysis is conservative, given the increasing trajectories of the drivers of extinction and their synergistic effects. Future losses easily may amount to further rapid defaunation of the globe and comparable losses in the diversity of plants, including the local and eventually global defaunation-driven co-extinction of plants. The likelihood of this rapid defaunation lies in the proximate causes of population extinctions, habitat conversion, climate disruption, over-exploitation, toxification, species invasions, diseases, and potentially large-scale nuclear war, all tied to one another in complex patterns and usually reinforcing each other's impacts. Much less frequently mentioned are, however, the ultimate drivers of those immediate causes of biotic destruction, namely, namely, human overpopulation and continued population growth and overconsumption, especially by the rich. These drivers, all of which trace to the fiction that perpetual growth can occur on a finite planet, are themselves increasing rapidly. Thus, we emphasize that the sixth mass extinction is already here and the window for effective action is very short probably two or three decades at most. All signs point to ever more powerful assaults on biodiversity in the next two decades, painting a dismal picture of the future of life, including human life. There you go. Amen. Uh, Brother Gerardo. I, I don't understand why Gerardo Ceballos uh, doesn't get a lot more attention uh, than he does. And we're hopefully we will change that. And I am uh, really looking forward to my, uh, my conversation with Gerardo tomorrow to tell us how... What, what, what was his closing sentence? <clears throat> How all signs point to ever more powerful assaults on biodiversity in the next two decades, painting a dismal picture of the future of life, including human life. So again, that will, we're going to broadcast that. We're going to hear from John Michael Greer this Sunday, and anyway, it will be the Sunday after that when Sam Mitchell finally uh, gets off his lazy you-know-what and uh, tries to remember how to interview people. Looks like the rain is rolling back in, so uh, not sure I'm going to be able to get much work done on my pole bean frame in my organic garden. Get out there and enjoy the biotic annihilation. 
while you still can, you're going to go do some biotic annihilation on the chipmunk vertebrate population at Bugs in a Jar Farm. That's your intention. I really don't think he will kill this chipmunk. Uh, he has dedicated his life. He did kill a mole yesterday. You did contribute to the biotic annihilation at Bugs in a Jar Farm when you killed that poor little mole. Yes. There you go, but Bob, I'm ready to get that chippy. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go do some biological annihilation on a chippy like that. Well, I need to get out there and do some biological annihilation on that chippy. Where's that chippy? Where is that chippy? I'm gonna get that chippy. You're gonna you're gonna biologically annihilate that chippy. Bye guys.